In 1952, The Bad and The Beautiful hit the screens, offering viewers a roller coaster ride through the complexities of Hollywood. This film, packed with drama and intrigue, is filled with lesser known facts and anecdotes that will both surprise and entertain you. Keep watching to uncover the funny, shocking, and sad truths lurking behind the scenes. As you delve into the movie, you might find yourself pondering which character's role was the most captivating. Tell us who stole the show for you. Share your thoughts in the comments below. We're eager to hear your cherished memories and personal experiences related to this cinematic gem. So don't hesitate to share. Let's keep the conversation going. In the bad and the beautiful, viewers encounter a compelling portrayal of golden age Hollywood's inner workings. Divided into three segments, the film chronicles the experiences of individuals intertwined with the ambitious protagonist, Jonathan Shields, played by Kirk Douglas. Through the perspectives of these characters, the narrative delves into Shields' manipulative pursuits to ascend in the film industry. The first segment features Barry Sullivan as a director who falls victim to Shields' schemes. Sullivan's performance draws viewers into the narrative, setting a strong foundation for the story. Lana Turner's portrayal of an unknown actress turned star adds depth to the second segment, despite moments of melodrama. The final segment focuses on Dick Powell as S.H.I.E.L.D.'s key screenwriter, offering a compelling performance that leaves viewers wanting more. While Powell's portrayal stands out, Gloria Graham's performance as his wife falls short, with her exaggerated accent detracting from the authenticity of the film. Despite this, the well-written script maintains engagement throughout, weaving a captivating narrative that transcends the soap opera labels some have attributed to it. Overall, The Bad and The Beautiful provides a captivating glimpse into the cutthroat world of Hollywood, showcasing the lengths individuals will go to in pursuit of success. Despite its flaws, the film's compelling performances and narrative depth make it a worthwhile watch for cinema enthusiasts. The Bad and The Beautiful is a movie from 1952. The film has a notable connection to other works in film history. For instance, characters working on death row, akin to ones portrayed in I Want to Live, and The Green Mile appeared in The Bad and The Beautiful. The lead actress in the movie, who gave birth to her only child at age 25, is linked to the film through her family. She had a daughter named Patricia E. Tate on January 29, 1924, with her first husband, Cullen Tate. Interestingly, her granddaughter expressed interest in pursuing acting, but her parents opted against allowing her to start as a child actress. These connections add depth to the legacy of the bad and the beautiful in the world of cinema. The bad and the beautiful features a cast with diverse experiences. For instance, one of its stars appeared as a substitute attorney on Perry Mason in 1963 alongside Betty Davis, Michael Rennie, and Hugh O'Brien. During that time, the lead of the show, Raymond Burr, was recovering from surgery. This experience made it clear to the actor that starring in a TV series wasn't for him. Additionally, another actor in the film, Bushman, served as a model for statues of Nathan Hale at Harvard and Lord Baltimore in Baltimore. Despite a 20-year hiatus from television, another cast member, Billingsley, made a comeback with the new Leave it to Beaver in 1983. Such diverse experiences among the cast members add depth to the bad and the beautiful, enriching its narrative and characters. The Bad and the Beautiful, released in 1952, gained widespread acclaim. The lead actor, spending over four decades in Palm Springs, California, was honored with a lushly landscaped drive named after him. This scenic route, known as Kirk Douglas Way, winds around part of Palm Springs International Airport, a grand celebration hosted by the Palm Springs International Film Society and International Film Festival took place to honor him. The event was attended by him, his wife Anne, and their three surviving sons. The campaign for this recognition was led by his son Joel, a resident of Palm Springs as well. He received three stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, one for motion pictures at 6915 Hollywood Boulevard, another for television at 6745 Hollywood Boulevard, and the last for radio at 2560 Vine Street in Hollywood, California. Interestingly, he passed away exactly 40 years after another prominent silent film star, Rudolph Valentino. The Bad and the Beautiful is a film from 1952. It was directed by Vincent Minnelli. Lana Turner, who played the role of Georgia Lorison in the film, admired directors like Frank Capra, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, and Gregory Lacava. She owned Pancho, the Chihuahua. Turner also auditioned for the role of Danny Thomas's second wife on The Danny Thomas Show in 1953. 
the bad, and the beautiful showcases Turner's talent and versatility as an actress, along with the work of other acclaimed actors and filmmakers. It remains a notable piece of cinema history known for its compelling narrative and strong performances. In the 1952 film The Bad and the Beautiful, an actor had roles in two famous TV moments. On The Dick Van Dyke Show in 1961, he played an army chaplain marrying Rob and Laura Petrie. Then, in 1969, he was on The Brady Bunch as the minister for Mike and Carol Brady's wedding. Adding depth to the film's story, a person connected to it, Barbara's first husband, Glenn Billingsley, was briefly married to the father of actor and producer Peter Billingsley. Peter, known for playing Ralphie in A Christmas Story, is Barbara's former husband, Glenn Billingsley's cousin. Barbara also appears in a book called Femme Noir Bad Girls of Film by Karen Burroughs Hansberry, highlighting her impact beyond acting. Her connection to the theme of bad girls in movies shows the varied roles she took on in her career. These connections show how people linked to the bad and the beautiful aren't just part of the film world, but also connected to memorable TV moments. The overlaps between their personal lives and their on-screen work add depth to the story of this classic movie. The Bad and the Beautiful is a significant film in the career of Dick Powell. In a 2014 article, he listed it as one of the movies he was most proud of. Powell, known for his roles in Warner backstage musicals in the 1930s, transitioned to private eye roles and later became a producer and director for both TV and movies. He passed away on the same day as Jack Carson, both from different forms of cancer. Powell's career highlights include The Strange Love of Martha Ivers, Champion and Ace in the Hole, among others. The Bad and the Beautiful stands out as a notable achievement in his filmography, showcasing his diverse talents and contributions to the industry. In a groundbreaking moment, Gloria Graham won an Oscar for her role in The Bad and the Beautiful, setting a record for the shortest winning performance. This record held until 1976, when Beatrice Strait won for her role in Network. The movie's influence went beyond awards, earning its lead a spot on the 50 Greatest Screen Legends list by the American Film Institute. Outside the movie world, the production was important to Michael Douglas. His removal from Summer Tree led him to get the rights for both stage and screen adaptations, giving his son a chance to shine. The bad and the beautiful significance goes beyond its runtime, leaving a lasting impact on cinematic history. Competing for the role of Princess Anne in Roman Holiday, she made a lasting impression on Hollywood. She was the first film actor hailed as king of the movies, opening doors for stars like Clark Gable. She broke barriers in the world of cinema. Sadly, she passed away a week after Richard Basehart, both from strokes. Basehart, known for playing Admiral Harriman Nelson in Irwin Allen's Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea series, also played a role she originally did in Allen's 1961 movie of the same name, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. In the movie The Bad and the Beautiful, her influence lives on, telling a compelling story that lasts. She and Basehart made their mark on Hollywood's history. Though their contributions were different, they both showed great skill in filmmaking. 